Hello, hello! Today we're going to be sketching anything that is related to the Percy Jackson universe. So first off, of course, we have to start with Percy Jackson himself. Now I'm not going to do a lot of explaining about the whole art process because you guys can just see it for yourself. What I'm going to do is talk about the series and how much I love it. So let's start off with something a bit controversial. I actually love Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief 2010 movie. <laughs> yes. I know, I know, as an adaptation, it is horrible. It really did just go say, and let's take the name of the characters from the book and make a whole different story. I didn't know that. I was about 13 years old when the movie came out and I really just liked the movie. And I didn't know anything about the books. I didn't even know they existed. I did, however, know about the stories of the Greek gods. And my favorite story to this day is the love story of Hades and Persephone. So, quick break from this sketchbook. Look, I can forgive the movie and Hollywood in general for making Hades like the typical bad guy. You know, they, they need a generic, I'm evil kind of person. I am going to be king of the gods. But why did they put Persephone in this movie? It is summer. Like, there's, they're in a summer camp. Why is she here? I don't need a perfect love story, okay? Like, he's cruel and abusive. I can appreciate that. I also can appreciate all the other romanticized versions of this story, and I love almost all of them. But the only thing I look forward to is my allotted time away from this hellhole. Allotted time away from this hellhole. Allotted time away from this hellhole. Right now, right now, is that a lot of time from this hellhole? Come on, come on. Like, this is like the lore of this universe. There can't be any summer if you are right here. I mean, <laughs> uh. Anywho, the main reason I said I love this movie, or the more appropriate term is I am grateful for this movie, is because it introduced me to the books. And at the time, I lived in the Philippines, in the province. So in this kind of in the middle of nowhere city called Ozami City and there were no major bookstores at the time. So we would go to a nearby city, um, I think it was Cagayan City, that actually has like a big brand bookstore called National Bookstore. And we would go there like maybe once or twice a year. So one time when we went there and my parents gave me and my sister a hundred thousand pesos did I say a hundred thousand? Sorry, a thousand pesos each to buy whatever we wanted. Um, and so when I saw the series of the movie that I kind of like on the shelves, I was like, ooh, that's interesting. And I, and I spent like a whole hour just debating with myself how many to buy. Because if I bought all four books that were available at the time, I would use my whole budget. And I even like try to make a deal with my sister to like split the cost and like I get two books, you get two books. She didn't take the deal. No, she ended up buying like one math book of all things that cost like a hundred pesos. And at the end of the day, I decided to buy all four using my whole budget. And the rest is history. So guess what? We both love the books. And I think my sister loves them a little bit more than me. She now even owns a signed copy of Magnus Chase, of one of the Magnus Chase, or was it the Polo Trials? She now owns like a signed copy of one of the books, and she has seen the musical live. I only got to see the slime tutorials. So you're welcome, little sister. Anyway, it does kind of even out because she bought the rest of the books when they eventually came out. Let's go back to the little town in Ozamis because I kind of started this little cult following to this fandom because as a fangirl, you want to find other people to fangirl and fanboy with. And the only way that was going to happen is if I, is that I had to make them myself. So it became my mission to convert as many people to the fandom as possible. And these books that I bought got passed around like crazy. It wasn't that hard because the movie was kind of popular during that time. So these poor books were breaking apart. I mean, some of my classmates had no respect for them because like the way I and the way me and my sister would read the book is like we wouldn't even like open the book the whole way to not break the spine. And my classmates were like folding the freaking book in half. And uh, I mean, really, but you know what? It's okay. We appreciate their sacrifice in spreading the word of Uncle Rick Riordan. They lived a good life being read as they were meant to be. But 
here is the true moral sin of some of these classmates of mine they just got and it just got on my nerves because some of them some of these people if you could believe it were like oh i don't need to read the first book i already watched the movie and oh my gosh i tried to explain to them that the movie and the book were so different and like you have to read the first book but no they they just went on and read the first i mean they read the second book anyway and as far as i can remember they never bothered to read the first book so if you know, I mean, can you imagine? Ah. But I really do love this series. This was my Harry Potter, and I do love Harry Potter, but I grew up with the movies rather than the books. I only read the books after watching at least up to like the fifth or sixth movie. So the Percy Jackson series were my books growing up. So again, thank you, 2010 movie, even though you kind of suck, for introducing this amazing universe. Maybe I will talk about the spin-offs some days like King Chronicles and Heroes of Olympus or maybe even the musicals. But right now I kind of want to talk about the upcoming Disney Plus series. Okay, personally I really really wanted an animated series. One reason is because I saw a fan made animation and it was awesome. Another reason is because I just really like animation and can you imagine this whole story all animated? I think it would be awesome. Um, another reason would be like we wouldn't have to worry about actors aging too fast and then we could like um, do time skips and flashbacks and cro crossovers and it would all still kind of make sense. But my sister does make a good point that the Percy Jackson series blends really well in the real world. Um, like the first book is basically like a real, it's like a road trip across America and it would be really cool to see all the landmarks and all the places they visit in this in the context of a show. But honestly, I'm not completely sure how I feel. I can't say that I'm completely excited about this series. Mainly, I think that this story isn't for me anymore. But what I can hope for this show is that it becomes what it was for me during that age to someone else. I hope that they make this for a new generation to tell the classic coming of age story and maybe just maybe they too will watch this series whether it is the greatest series adaptation of all time or kind of meh and you know just get interested enough to pick up the books and dive deeper into the world of gods monsters and demigods okay so i just forgot to mention that we used the official art as a reference and here is the final spread so this is Percy, Annabeth, Grover another Percy, Annabeth and Grover we got Tyson, Clarice, Rachel Elizabeth there, Nico, Bianca, Talia and Luke and the whole spread is now officially done Thanks for watching guys, keep creating. Okay, speaking of Persephone and Hades, this just arrived and... Oh, look at it! Thunder World by Linda Sajik. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but I think this is like the best version of this myth. And you can read it on webtoons which is like completely free and if you want you can get this on amazon so totally totally recommend it um yeah that's all bye see you guys next time